This is Al McRobbie at Sailing Company and today I'm going to talk to you about a, a very exciting product that we have. We've been selling it for many years but we thought we'd talk a little bit about it here. It's a it's a torque sensor from Sensor Technologies in England and the one I'm holding right here is a uh, actually a dual transducer because it has both torque and speed outputs. Um, you might ask why do you want to have a torque transducer? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, obviously you may want to measure torque from a motor or an engine um, as it's applied to some application. Um, you might want to measure power and you can do that with a, a transducer such as this that has both torque and speed outputs. And the other thing that you might want to do is uh, use it in a control loop system where you're trying to uh, achieve a nice critically damped uh, response to speed, uh, speed change in your system. And another application would be is that if you want to just monitor the performance of existing systems like uh, something in an industrial application and you're concerned about uptime, you might want to watch uh, how the system is working when it's operating properly, you want to measure the torque and the speed and the power that's going into it. And if there's any big changes, they may in indicate a problem. And by monitoring what's going on with your system, you can schedule maintenance more intelligently and avoid catastrophic failures in the system. So what I'm thinking of are things like uh, measuring dy uh, dynamometer applications, uh, measuring gearbox performance, uh, conveyors, pumps, mixers, things like that. And uh, there's actually a, uh, this company that makes these products has a lot of experience in all of these different applications. What I'd like to do now is to talk about the range of the transducers that are available in the RWT family. Um, first of all, there's, there's two basic groups of them. One is a torque only type of situation and the other one is a torque and speed. So the, the torque and speed units are a little bit more expensive and they have more options available on them for communications, but we'll, we'll get into that in more detail later. Um, in terms of torque performance, the two ranges are identical. The torque on the smallest transducer, the maximum torque that can be achieved on that one is one newton meter, and they go up in 27 different steps to 13,000 newton meters. Now the case on the larger ones changes from this basic smaller case that you see here um, in, in a larger box and one that becomes sort of octagonal with a 50 millimeter uh, shaft through it, um, 50 millimeter diameter. Um, this transducer here is a 100 newton, newton meter transducer just for reference and it's, and it's the end to end shaft length is somewhere between five and six inches. Um, the speeds of the transducers um, go down as they get larger, but the smallest transducers can be run up to 30,000 RPM and the largest ones can go up to 6,000. And there's different options for bearings and seals as well. So just uh, keep that in mind. One of the things I'd like to point out too is that it's got both digital and analog outputs and for the, for the uh, family, the, the 420 family, uh, the torque only comes out as an analog and then the other family, the, you can have both digital and analog signals coming out simultaneously and I'll show you that in the test setup behind me uh, later on. Um, what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about the, the way that this transducer actually works because this is a what we call a Rayleigh wave transducer and it's a it's a method that sensor technology uses to avoid the use of slip rings on the on the moving part here the shaft that goes through this so basically it's a non-contact unit and it uses a radio frequency coupling in order to um, interface the electronics that are in the box to the actual sensor elements that are embedded on this rotating shaft here. Now let's talk about the elements. What we have on the shaft is a machined area flat which is highly polished and then uh, piezoelectric transducers are 
bonded to the shaft. There's two of them on there. They're orthogonal to each other, and they're a 90 degree, they're a 45 degree axis from the shaft, from the axis of the shaft. And on these piezoelectric transducers, actually are are um, <coughs> deposited some interdigitated fingers. Okay, so they've, we've got a couple of these on there. And we also have some additional deposits for reflectors at either end of the transducer, which is rectangular, basically. Each element is a rectangular piece of, of um, piezoelectric material, like a quartz substrate, which is also highly polished. So what these elements do is they form parts of an oscillator circuit. There's two different sensors on there, so they are, and they are set up to operate at slightly different frequencies. So what happens is as the, as the shaft is, is subjected to torque in either direction, it actually changes the, the spacing between the inner digitations. And this shifts the, the, the center frequency of the oscillators. Okay, and so it, what happens is the output of each of these oscillators is, is, is put together in a mixer. So you get a, you get a sum frequency and a different frequ difference frequency. And it's the difference frequency that's used to determine what the torque is. And so there's a direct relationship between the torque and the frequency shift caused by it. So that's how they get the information out of this. And there's a, <clears throat> basically a disc-shaped rotating antenna it's on the shaft with the transducers that actually facilitates the coupling between the shaft and the electronics that are in the, that are in the case around there. Now we're going to talk about software. The, um, the transducer, as I mentioned, has digital and analog output connections, as you can see here. Um, if, if you buy the less expensive model, the analog outputs are available, and they're usually fixed at plus or minus 10 volts full scale. Um, if you get the transducer that is the, um, the, the 420 series instead of the 410, uh, there are various options available. The, the transducers that we have here for this demo are 421s, and they're both equipped with a USB output.